Okay, we're live. Hi. Hi. Perfect. Okay, we're back for another episode of Self Care Is My Job. As usual, I have some of the most awesome, amazing people coming joining me on the show. So I want to welcome Sarah to the show, and um, I'm going to give her a second in a moment to just um, introduce herself. So Sarah is a, or, or you know, at least to tell us more about what you do, right? Sarah is a Reiki practitioner, a registered nurse, and an artist. So this is going to be such a juicy conversation because I am deep, deep in the um, energy work slash art as self-care realm right now. So like this is this is a conversation I'm dying to have. <laughs> so welcome again, Sarah Burlingame. Am Thank I saying you. it right? Sarah Burlingame? Yeah. Should have asked you that before. So <laughs> um, I just want to know about you, um, but also not only about you now, but a little bit about like how you became a Reiki practitioner or why that came into your realm and how, you know, were you always an artist and was there a period where you really started incorporating that in a bigger way? You know, like how did you get to where you are now? Sure. So um, I would say I've I've been an artist my whole life. Like I've loved art since I was little um, up until recently, it's really been kind of a hit or miss kind of thing, which growing up, I seemed to commit more time to creating, whether that be drawing, painting, poetry, like creating all the things. And then, you know, I grew up, kind of fell away from it and it would come back into my life sporadically. I wasn't really giving it the time that I wanted. Mm. Um, but I remember back in high school, I had the option to take a second art class. There was this other class that I just like, I was not into. And they were like, well, you can take another elective if you want. It was like art or I don't know, something else. And I was like, I'll take the other art class. <laughs> like, give me all of the art all day. Um, yeah. So I've just always loved creating. I would say that I am a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to my creations. I always feel like, oh, it's not quite done yet. I got to add something here. So there's really always kind of been like this control piece when it comes to my artwork, which I've started to let go recently. Um, well, it's been a little longer, actually. In 2018, I started experimenting with acrylic pouring. And up until then, it had mainly just been like painting with the acrylics, um, some watercolors here and there. But the acrylic pouring really kind of open things up for me because you have no control over what happens. You can have a general idea of like what you want it to turn out as, but once you pour, like it has a life of its own and it's, it is what it is. So I would say, honestly, that's helped me in other ways to just kind of let go a little bit, surrender and just be more open to whatever the outcome may be. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that I'm really grateful for my love of art and creating because my daughter actually loves creating and she's amazing. Like I look at some of her work and I'm like, wow, I'm pretty sure you're better than me. But it's just so great that she loves it so much. And it really makes me so happy that she just loves to do that. And like she'll ask to do pours with me, which is a lot of fun. Um, I still have to let go of a little bit of control there because I have to let her do it and like not be all up in her space, but, um, it's been really great. And to speak a little bit about Reiki. So oh, there's my dog. Oh, I'm backwards. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> hello there. May or may not start barking. So that's okay. Um, Reiki came into my life, oh, uh, well, actually, maybe I should talk about nursing first, because that really came before anything. So I've been a nurse for 14 years now, and really have had experience in a lot of different places. Started at the hospital, went to um, hematology, oncology, which at 
in my entire career really has been like the longest I've been at a certain specialty. I was there for five years and that's really where I was introduced to Reiki because we had a specialty office, so to speak. They offered all these different complementary therapies and Reiki was one of them. And I had never really experienced it before. There was just a lot of talk about it at the office all the time. And I always wanted to go, but the office was about, it was probably like 30, maybe 45 minutes away from the house. And at the time, it was just kind of not feasible for me to go. I mean, I probably could have if I rearrange some things, but my kids were a lot younger then and it was like, I have to get home. So just, I never really experienced it, but always wanted to. And in 2017, I actually discovered that there was a (laughs) Reiki practitioner literally like eight minutes from me. But the worst thing was this building had been there for probably like five or six years. And I just assumed it was a yoga studio. It's called infinite light. And I don't know. I never really looked it up. I was just like, Oh, it's a yoga studio, whatever. We'll come to find out like (laughs) they did Reiki there and all of this other stuff. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I have to do this now because it's literally less than 10 minutes away from me. And it was really a combination of things that kind of led me to Reiki. It was one, just always kind of knowing about it and wanting to experience it just based on what I had heard in the office from our patients. And then at that point, um, my son actually was a little over a year old and (laughs) I'll never forget. Like I was upstairs with my daughter. We were laying on our, my bed and we were watching Moana. And my Best husband, children's movie ever. I love it. I could watch it over and over. And my husband was actually leaving that day to go with his dad and one of their friends. Um, they, I, they were doing something. I don't remember what that was now. But I remember I literally just like I broke down in the kitchen talking to my husband because I was like, I just felt so overwhelmed as a mom at that point. Like my daughter was four and you know, Ricky, little Ricky was still just like a baby really. And I just felt like all I ever did was work, come home, take care of the kids, make dinner, like go to bed, do it all over. I didn't do anything for myself anymore. It was like, I was consumed with everything else, which I think sadly is kind of normal, you know, and common. Maybe yeah. not normal, but common. Not normal, but common. <laughs> That's what I was Extremely like. common. And I just, I, he was getting ready to leave and I broke down. I started sobbing and he was like, oh my God, like, what is the matter? And I was just like, I, I don't know. I just feel so overwhelmed. Like I can't keep going like this. You know, we have the kids and yes, this is what I always wanted. Like a family, I wanted to be a mom. And, but I just feel like I'm not doing anything for myself anymore. Like. I used to take time for myself before both of the kids and I just hadn't done it in so long. And he was like, well, what do you need? And I was like, I don't know, but I just need like something. I need a break. I need to, to do more things for myself. And then, um, I had actually seen a post online that the, the infinite light center was doing a Reiki practitioner class and I signed up for it and got my level one and this was after i should back up actually i had a reiki session first and it was literally the most mind-blowing experience i've ever had i try to put it to words for people so many times but it's one of those things like you have to experience it Mm. yeah and i know everyone's experience can be completely different but for me it's like i walked in and i felt like the weight of the world was on my shoulders i felt so defeated and just sad and just really lonely and when i left i felt like i was floating like i everything was just gone the heaviness the sadness the feelings of like who am i and what am I even doing here? Like all of that was gone. And I just felt like I could breathe again. It was like this breath of fresh air. And at that moment I was like, everyone needs to experience this. Like 
everyone has to to go through this at least once they need to experience how amazing this is and that's really kind of what drew me to be a practitioner and i remember thinking too like oh well i could i could never be a reiki practitioner like you have to have a certain i don't know what but you know a thing about you mm -hmm. and i was talking to my reiki master be a unicorn or something yeah exactly <laughs> And she was like, no, it doesn't take anything special. Like, if you want to be one, you can. And, uh, you know, I think it was mainly just that that spark. Like, oh, yes. Like, I, I definitely want to do this because it just was, like, such a profound moment for me that I wanted to be able to provide that for other people. Yeah. Awesome. That's what happens, right? Like you have, that's what was coming up for me when you were telling your story. Like you had this draw for such a long time towards having that first Reiki experience, mm -hmm. right? And it was in your peripheral, but you didn't exactly have the circumstances to make it happen, but it was still there and it continued until it popped up eight minutes from you, right? Like it, it you were led to it and it was persistent, but patient with you, right? Until you were ready. And the thing is that, I mean, just to, you know, note just how aligned our stories are. I mean, most of the moms that I interview on the show or that I just simply talk to, we all resonate because we're all kind of having not only a general experience of, feeling like some form of self-neglect early on in motherhood or for prolonged periods of time um, because of this sort of expectation of self-sacrifice that comes in and you just want to fit into that box of what we're taught that you're supposed to do as a mom. So you just do. And then before you know it, you're totally depleted, not only mentally and emotionally, but spiritually mm -hmm. because you have lost whether, you know, whether whatever that means to you, whether you've lost connection to something bigger yourself or you've just lost connection to yourself, which is also a spiritual concept. Um, and we need to find the thing that's going to bring us back home. And so it's going to be different for everyone. And I had a very, like I said, your story resonates fully because, I mean, I had a very similar um, experience early on after my first even after like um, when my first was four months old, I started a wine tasting business and that started rolling relatively quickly and I started booking events and it was like one of those things that was totally fun and fulfilling and it was definitely the perfect thing to me for me to be doing at that point in time. But yet still there was something missing and now when I look back in retrospect, there was that spiritual piece that was missing because it was a connection to myself that really wasn't being gained by just the idea of bringing in a project to validate me or an income to validate me. So you try to fix things by way of that. And then maybe for you, it might have been something like, you know, staying dedicated to your career, even burrowing through all the exhaustion of being a mom. Like, you know, you're like, we're trying to validate ourselves and be fulfilled in that way. But there, what most moms miss is that it's okay to want more than that, to need more than that, you know, because we are painted this picture of what it should, what should fulfill us. Yes. Right. Because of, because if we're given this picture and this messaging and marketing and all whatever, huh? <laughs> And, you know, we're conditioned to believe that this is what, you know, white picket fence or whatever, ha what have you, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is what will fulfill you. And then it doesn't. Then it feels like something's wrong. And so the answer is I that wanting more or needing more than that is somehow wrong. Yeah. Um, but so it takes us some time on that note. You know, I think to navigate that phase, it takes us some time to get to a place where we are really ready to, you know, fly the coop, as they say, or just go like, I need some time to go and do these things for myself. And, it, you know, that's a whole nother box, you know, whole nother can of worms, right, of how to navigate that. And uh, which is why I work with moms specifically, right? Um, to kind of like get to that place where you're like, I'm ready to prioritize myself. I'm ready to do the thing 
that I've been, that my soul literally has been asking me to do Mm -hmm. that I just have blocks to doing, whether they are physical in this world blocks or whether they are energetic or whether they are, um, you know, trauma that is coming up again, that is putting you into a response that is not allowing you to move forward. Um, so on that note, I'd love to ask you because, um, I have experienced Reiki and I have experienced, I'm not a Reiki practitioner, but I have experienced Reiki and I've experienced other, um, energy healing modalities like access bars, which is like lesser known, but like, that's kind of my jam these days. And, um, and you know, so full disclosure, right? Like, I don't think I wouldn't say that I was ever a person who would be like, all of this is just woo woo crazy stuff. Like I was never in that category, but fully because of messaging and everything I absorbed in limiting belief systems that were handed to me from people who had different experiences in life. Um, I had resistance years ago. Like I completely had resistance to this concept of energy where, okay, like, well, what is it? You know? Right. And of course, having experienced it. Now the thing is that again, sometimes it takes time. There's this phase that you have to go through before you are ready to accept something as like beneficial or whatever. And my process, obviously through yoga and meditation, you know, it started there for me because it needed, because that you know, most people come to yoga as a form of a physical self-care. They come from it. Maybe could be fitness or maybe it's just to, yeah, like gain some kind of release of tension in their body. It's it's normally pretty physical as the reason people jump in. And then they get, which was my experience, and then they get way more than they paid for. <laughs> um, and so, you know, in a nutshell, being able to not only get comfortable in my body because of those physical benefits and then be in my body and then embody the presence and stillness. Now, all of a sudden I'm getting closer and closer and closer to the real me over years of practice, very gradually getting closer and closer to the real me until eventually, especially in yoga teacher training, there is finally this resurgence of that glimmer of like, I have always believed in this stuff. Like I have always been in this, you know, mindset of understanding that there are, there's something so much bigger than just like this body that I'm in. And there's an energy between us, between me and you, even through, you know, this setting through virtual, there's an energy between me and the goddamn tree I'm staring at. Like, I've always known this, um, not believed this, known this, yeah. but we lose touch with what feels true to us based on what we absorb from childhood and on. You know, we absorb the stories everybody else's perception. We just absorb that. And we take that on as our belief systems and our personality. So at risk of going on a full tangent here, that's my journey of like coming to a place of like, ah, yes, no, no, no. Like I, this is, this is a very, not only real, but beneficial thing for me. So, um, I'm all about it. And, but just for somebody who might not have had that experience yet, like what is Reiki? And like, you know, what are the benefits? Like, what is it? What are the benefits? How do you, um, how do you facilitate it? Mm -hmm. You can answer any of those questions. (laughs) Yeah. So I really get what you're saying though, because for me, like when I think of like yoga or meditation, it's something that you're physically doing, right? So you can kind of get behind that a little bit more easier. Like, okay, I'm going to do meditation. I'm going to do yoga. Like I'm doing something I can, Mm. you know, I can, I'm physically doing something. Mm. Reiki as more of an energy work is like, okay, was it really working? You know, like you're you're, just being, right. You're just there. You're not doing anything. So is this really doing anything for me, helping me in any. So um, Reiki is a Japanese technique, uh, holistic healing, if you will. Uh, It's all about energy work. Reiki itself means, um, 
universal life force energy. So the concept is we all have this life force energy within us and it's either balanced or it's not. And a lot of things throw it off balance, stress, uh, anxiety, like not specifically anxiety, you get anxiety from it, but stress, just everything happening in the, in your every day, uh, poor diets, you know, alcohol, things like that, things in excess that aren't good for you, uh, really can lower your life force energy, which leads to illness and anxiety and overwhelm and all of the, the, I don't want to say bad, but you know, the things that you really don't enjoy feeling. So Reiki itself, they say it's like a, some people refer to it as healing hands, just because the energy really is facilitated in your hands. Uh, When you do the session, typically you're just kind of hovering your hands over the person. There can be light touch involved, but generally, you know, you're, channeling pure source energy through your hands and my hands are like heating up as I'm (laughs) talking about it Mm -hmm. but it's like the energy is moving through your hands and there are different hand positions that you use Um, you start at the crown and you just kind of work your way down through each of the hand positions and as a practitioner you can really feel the energy moving And you kind of just intuitively know like, okay, like I'm done with this area. So now I'm going to move on um, to the next position. And the, the crazy thing about it to me still, I guess not crazy because, you know, I, I understand how it works, but like, because it's energy, I can do distance sessions. Like I can give you a Reiki session from where I'm at and we're, (laughs) miles and miles away from each other Mm -hmm. so that's just i don't know that was one of the things that really drew me into was that you know i can go ahead and give distance or (laughs) person sessions in person but that was one of the things that really drew me was wow i can be a reiki practitioner and send reiki to people anywhere in the world and I can infuse Reiki into my food, into my water, into my clothing, like into my home. I do that. That hasn't been a regular part of my practice until recently. Um, You know, I'm human. I fall out of the, my practice. I forget some days. I forget for a week sometimes. But one of the things I've been doing is just really using the Reiki symbols. So that's the other part of it too is, each level you're attuned to different symbols. So I'm currently a level two practitioner. I'm um, planning to get my master of training in the near future. So I'm attuned to certain symbols that I can use to facilitate the distance healing. There's a distance symbol um, and I can literally take the symbol and infuse it onto the walls, like into my room, literally anything. And just to feel the difference in the space is it's, it's just, I, again, I, it's hard to describe. Um, it just feels like the energy is clean and it's almost like I I did a post about this, but it's like when your house is really stuffy over the winter because you can't open the windows because it's so cold out and it's just like this old stale air and you finally open the windows in the springtime and you get that, like first rush of air that comes in and it's just like, ah, it smells so good and it's refreshing and it just clears out all of the stagnation. Like that's, that's what it is. That's what it, how it feels for me. Mm. Yeah. I do love that first, you know, day of spring where you can just kind of (laughs) like finally be free. Um, And I think that, you know, there's something to be said about your experience with it really only being able to be described in that way of like an analogy of like, you know, bringing in the spring air, like, but we both know that the clearing is probably the most important part. And just to connect the dots for you, like 
you know, what you had mentioned, we all have this life force energy, this universal life force energy. And it's just a matter of whether it's balanced, whether it's available to you or whether you're blocked in certain areas based on number of things. It could be what's going on spiritually within yourself. It could be outside of you, your circumstances. Like I always talk about that recently about how, you know, like contest, context, and experience and 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 circumstances are a valid part of your experience. You know, like I find especially women are so blocked sometimes about um, talking about the context of certain situations and their experience because they're so worried about being viewed as complaining or you know whining or emotional or overly sensitive or whatever. So they don't they won't blame their circumstances and their context, but like your circumstances, your exter- your external life obviously has a massive impact on what's going on with you in your inner energy. Yeah. So I always talk about that recently is just like, you know, it doesn't, because when we, when we talk about being off, you know, or not balanced or I mean, it's not something that you're doing to you, or it's not something where you're like, I'm wrong, I'm off, right? Because that word balance is also thrown around so much. And it's so fleeting, that balance, like you can have it for a moment, and then your circumstances will change. (laughs) And now you're off balance. And so what I've been talking about a lot lately, especially in regards to mental health, especially this month being Mental Health Awareness Month, um, is like the idea of just like embracing it all that like all of these emotions and all of these experiences are like, and all of these stages and phases that you go through, whether they feel balanced or not are a part of your journey and they're a part of you. So being okay with it all instead of point, you know, creating this like polarized experience from within you of what's right and what's wrong, what's balanced and not balanced. Oh, now I'm now, you know, this week I spent too much time on work and not enough time with my kids. Okay. Well, maybe you'll have another week where you spend more time with your kids and less time on work. And so your balance for that week (laughs) will be off built, you know, that you felt was off will be, you know, negated by the fact that a different week, you know, it's just one of those things where, um, which actually leads me to one of your other posts that I wanted to bring out because that's kind of um, something that I do to myself, which is of course why I selfishly like to talk about these things on the show, Um, you know, and where we can get blocked or unbalanced in our energy is when we're letting the outside circumstances or concept or, or context or everybody else's opinion or voices or belief systems infiltrate what our true essence is and what our true beliefs are and like our, our true, our true essence. So you had a post recently about how you're shooting yourself, <laughs> which we have talked about several times with different friends on this show, but it happens to be, and I don't think I'm alone when I say this, it happens to be in regards to mental health, my number one struggle with my mental health is allowing those inner voices of the expectations and the belief systems that were placed inside my brain over time to should, should, should me. And then again, those voices sometimes can get very, very loud and they go from shoulding to, um, criticizing to even berating, Mm -hmm. right. Of, you know, you're wrong. You're wrong. Um, you're not good enough. You're not qualified enough you're too much, you're not enough. Like it's just, it is the, it is the basis of the, my biggest mental wellness struggle. And I have many things that I do for self-care to, to soothe in that area, but it doesn't mean that it disappears entirely. And it also doesn't mean that that isn't still like just a part of me that I can't sit here and go, yeah, you know, now, you know, the voices are loud and now I'm going to, you know, should myself about that right now. It's, well, I shouldn't allow those voices to get so loud. I shouldn't, you know, yeah. I should be able to overcome that. We can't go down that road. We have to embrace it all. So what you wrote was I've been in the shoulds 
Shoulds are mind. Mind plays tricks. Sacral knows. I'm meant to do things differently. I am meant to be passionate about multiple things. I am meant to be immersed in the magic of creation. I am meant to shift, respond, expand, contract, and change my mind at any given time. And I am meant to do uh, what sets my soul on fire. I am a multifaceted, juicy, sacral being. (sighs) So I love, you know, the reference first and foremost of the sacral, you know, being the water chakra sacral for those who are listening wouldn't be not your, not your first chakra, your root, which is right all the way down between your hmm hmm and your hmm hmm, as I like to say it, um, as far as energy centers, right. But your sacral is that next sock chakra. So for women who are listening, that's your womb space, right. Or below the navel for any, any gender or, um, anyone listening. So, um, and that regardless of gender really, really is energetically and physically and biologically. Yeah. That's why we call it the water chakra or the water, you know, center, because it's, um, it's this place of flow and fluidity. I mean, when you think about it, regardless of your gender, everything's just kind of floating around in there in that region. There's not, there's nothing just floating around in this bowl, um, which is your pelvis. So, um, when we talk about that kind of energy, it's flow, it's surrender. And so tell me a little bit more about not only what that post means to you, but maybe even what was going on for you at the time. So there was, it was kind of had to do with, I mean, a little bit of everything really. And, um, I'm diving more into human design. So I've kind of dabbled a little bit in the past, like I've had some readings, but recently it's more of understanding more of like what it really means. And for the longest time, like this goes back to my other post too, about, you know, not fitting in and things like that. And just Mm -hmm. feel like, why can't I do things like other people? Like other people do X, Y, and Z. I try, I can't, I just can't do it. Like something is wrong with me. And that's kind of a lot of how I live my life and like through school and even in like my nine to fives Mm. business, like, well, everyone's doing it this way, but so I should be able to do that too. And it really wasn't until I kind of started to understand more human design. And this isn't to say like, I only live by my human design. Like I, you know, it's, It's not like that. It's just a better understanding of like some of who, like why I am the way I am, how I operate, things like that. So um, I'm a Manny Gen, so multifaceted, like managing generator, right? That's manifesting manifesting generator. I knew that came out wrong. Manifesting, like you're managing, like you're managing manifesting generator. So like I'm meant to have all of these passions. I'm meant to be doing more than one thing at once, which was something that always seemed wrong to me just based off of everything that was conditioned in me, right? Like, well, you can't be doing three things at once. Like you have to focus on one. And it's like, oh, like that's mm, doesn't mm. feel good to me. Like I want to be doing this. I want to be doing that. And then also change my mind. Like that's a part of being a manifesting generator as well. And like you, and obviously like there's different lines and they mean different things, but it's like, I can choose a project and start it and then decide halfway, like, "Mm, that's not for me anymore. I don't want to do it. And it's like getting okay with that has really been hard for me because again, like you're Mm. don't quit. Like you don't give up, you finish what you start, you know, and the whole thing about like listening to my sacral. So I have a defined sacral and that is where I really get a lot of my energy and I can feel like I feel my yeses and my noes. So like I respond to things and it's been getting used to really trusting that like, you know, instead of saying yes out of obligation, because that's what I should do. Mm. It's 
I really sit with myself first and ask, like, is it, is it in my best interest, like, to do this? And then I, I wait for the yes or the no. I don't just say, yes, I'm going to do this because I feel like I should, or I don't want to hurt someone's feelings. And it's just really getting out of my head and getting into my body. Like, because I, for so long, like I've lived in my head and like, I've had conversations today with someone else and then like, I'm constantly up all, all up in my head. I have an open head in human design as well, which is part of the problem, well, problem, but, um, so it's learning to just really embrace all of that, but no, like there's nothing wrong with me just because I can't do it the way this like business wise, for example, I can't do it the way this like multimillionaire is doing it is being successful in mm -hmm. this way. And she says I should do it this way. And I try and I can't doesn't mean that there's something wrong with me. It just means like, I'm not meant to do it that way. And I'm meant to break out of the box and do what feels good to me and trust that when I'm doing what feels good, more of that more of feeling good and more of what I want is going to come to me. Absolutely. Ooh, write that down. Goosies. <laughs> it was just 11, 11 while you were saying, as soon as you said out of my head and into my body, mm -hmm. 11, 11. So, um, yeah, a lot there. So absolutely. And again, you know, as suspected, you're like, Re it's resonating so much with my own story. And honestly, it has been only in the last year that I have been able to connect to exactly what you were just saying. The idea that why, first of all, of course, that same voice, I have that same voice that says, why can't you do that? She's doing it. She's doing it. Now, granted, we have to establish, hate to say it, but not only um, checking in with everybody has a different life and different capacities of energy um, and time. Mm -hmm. We have small children that needs to be taken into account. So, but that doesn't mean that I haven't spent energy and time comparing myself to the chick with no kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have to check our, like we have to check, their privilege first, right? Maybe it's even about money. Maybe it's even about, um, you know, having someone willing and able to front you 10 or 20 or a hundred grand, uh, at the start of your business, at the start of launch, launching your business, whether that is your partner or whether that is your parent or someone else, whatever it is, but that's a privilege that some of us don't have. So like just examples of like certain things that like early on, I feel in that process of, of understanding that there's nothing wrong with us. You, when you are lost in that, you don't even like for me, at least like I, I couldn't even see past that. Even I couldn't even understand. It was still like, why is like, for me, it was more like, why is it taking me so long? Mm -hmm. And, um, but also, yeah, like why aren't these strategies that seem to be working for other people working for me. I mean, I even still to this day am experiencing um, sort of this space where I have so much to give and so much ideas and just notebooks full of concepts and talks and important, like full, like almost fully outlined programs, right? That have yet to be executed in any way, shape or form. And so I still to this day will sit in judgment of myself time and time again of why that is, right? So first we have to take in these things into account when we're comparing ourselves to what works for some, why is, why is this working for them and not, you know, and not for us. But then there's something deeper, right? There's something even deeper, which you hit on is just like, this has to work for me, not just like, oh, work for my lifestyle with the kids and everything. This has to work for me where it's like a very intuitive, cozy little fit into the design by which I am meant to live my life in truth, right? Not just what I was kind of sold. Um, 
And human design was also a major game changer for me. So if you're listening to this and you're like, what the fuck is human design? You should go back and listen to the episode with Heather Nieves, which was one of the, which is one of the earlier episodes of this show, which, which, um, because Heather was the one who introduced me to, to human design. And, um, I'm a projector. And, um, so just to give you like that, you know, that type of, you know, two different coming in from two different designs, two different approaches. Right. But at the same time, you're like, I want to do a lot of things at once. Like I also experience the same thing. Like I, and I want to get into this a little bit more with you because you also wear a lot of hats. Mm -hmm. I am wearing so many hats right now. And sometimes I will also sit in judgment of myself. Why are you wearing so many hats? What, what are you going to put down? You got to put down stuff if you want th this to grow and da, da 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 I mean, and there's something to be said about that. But yes, I am passionate about so many things. I am a singer, songwriter. I have the coaching business I'm really passionate about. Um, I'm very, you know, specifically like to focus on moms. But at the same time, I have a focus on trauma and like really also have a need to go down the childhood and developmental trauma rabbit hole as far as training and education. Da, da, da. So like I'm passionate about a lot of things. Um, and yes, we are told, and it's like a kind of like this, it's a quite frankly, it's a patriarchal belief system of that is very black and white. Anytime that there is this black and white thinking involved, that is that patriarchy lineage, like that's that lineage of thought that comes through and says, and it is, it's just a very mask. I mean, we can't get into that right now, but it's like also a very masculine way of thinking, not that that is bad, but the black and white doesn't work a for many feminine beings. And it also just doesn't work in for every person. Um, there has to be nuance and gray area to what's possible. So that would be, okay, yeah, it's okay to be not only passionate about many different things, but even taking it a bit further to take your time to, to allow things to blossom and evolve organically. And again, you know, it's almost funny how it comes back to that concept of balance that I was talking about before, where it's just like, um, you know, one week I might be very, very deep in this thing. And then the next week I have to swing the other way and come back to the other thing. And that's okay. And that's not going to look like balance when you think about it. If it's like this, you know, that's not going to look like the idea of balance that we were sold. It's going to look like chaos actually. But what it, you know, what it looks like is often part of the bullshit story. Yeah, You know, and that's where that shooting comes in full circle, right? The shooting comes in when something doesn't look like what we were told and, and, and taught that it's supposed to look like. So it doesn't look like that balance even doesn't look like that. So now if it's not that it's crazy, it's chaos. You're all over the place. You're a hot mess. Da -da 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 -da. Um, nah, negotiable, not, not really buying that. So I just love that you brought that up. It's really important. And I think that it is, like I said, a place where many women struggle emotionally and mentally when they're trying, when we're in that comparison game. I mean, we've been hearing for years about how comparison is the killer of joy. And, we, you know, it, it, this has been in our, you know, in the, in, in the, um, in the collective consciousness for a while of having to let go of that. But I feel like we need, we're going deeper now and we're trying, we're really understanding where it's coming from. And we're understanding that it, it can't be like, oh, okay, I just remove that thing that I do. Like, you know, like that, this is not, that's not how it works. You have to love yourself. You have to trust yourself, but there's so much work to be done in many cases to get to that. That's why we call it the work, right? It's work. It's a journey. Like this isn't, you know, it's not an on off switch. Um, but there really is no higher, in my opinion, like there's literally no higher form of self-love and self-trust than when you dedicate yourself to that journey as hard as it is, to that work and to that journey, like as hard as it is and like as easy as it would be for me to turn around and say, 
I'm just going to go ahead and abandon myself and my truth again. And I'm just going to go do all the things that um, made everyone else happy and comfortable and view me as normal um, over all those past years. I'm going to go back to doing all those things because it seems way easier. And I'll just, you know, disappoint less people and confuse less people and ruffle less feathers and everything will just be easier when in reality it will be harder um, in the long run. But it is, you know, of course, a form of major dedication and like discipline to stay on this path, of course. So there's that. And that kind of, you know, leads into it was the post um, that first, you know, you mentioned it before that like first sparked me to be like, we need to talk about this on the show because it was about I tried to fit in for years to be normal, to be the same as everyone else, to not be seen, to follow, allow me to reintroduce myself. <laughs> I'm a quirky bitch and I do, do things outside of the box. I'm a rebel and I go first. I am the leader. I am the permission slip. I am the creator. I am healer. I am art. I am Reiki, muse Sarah. <sighs> so was that like, I feel like that was a, you know, like a, an emergence for you of, of sorts. That's the vibe I got. <laughs> yeah. So like what you were just speaking on about how, and I can't tell you how many times I've had this thought, like oh, it would just be so much easier if I could just go back to how I was and just, just not do this because sometimes it's exhausting and I just like, it feels really hard. And, you know, the one thing I can say is, the one thing that makes it so much easier is just a community of people who totally get it and support you because, you know, obviously my family loves me very much, but there are some people who are like, what the fuck are you doing? Like mm -hmm. I don't at all. And that really can make you question yourself. Like, Oh, well, am I, should I really be doing this then? Like all these people think this about me and maybe I really shouldn't be doing this. I should just go back to like who I was before and what I was doing and just the community of people to really support you who are going through the same thing and encourage you like that has really helped tremendously. But I think, you know, that day I was just thinking back about how it was one of those days, you know, I was having a hard day and I was just thinking about, you know, especially in high school, um, you know, I was one of those people who I wasn't popular, but I wasn't a dork. You know, I was kind of like in between like, oh, the cool kids kind of talk to me. They're not embarrassed to be seen talking to me, you know, those people. And it was just like, I did the best I could to just be in the back, not be seen, not be heard, just kind of skate by and be quiet. And mm. it was just kind of like, I'm done trying to do that because that's, that's actually harder than trying to be who I am. And I just, it was like, you know what, this, this is me. This is who I am. If you don't like it, fine. Like you can go elsewhere, but I'm not going to fit inside this little box or this little idea or this expectation of who I am, like who you think I am. I just, I just want to be me and I'm done trying to pretend that I'm just like everybody else. And I just want to embrace that. You know what? Yeah. Some people may think I'm weird and I don't really care anymore. Like I would rather be weird and seen as someone who's a little out there than just kind of be cookie cutter, like a, a normal person, right? So one of my friends always, I don't, I work from home now, so like it's not really that, it doesn't really go on anymore. But when I was working in the office with one of my friends, I always was like bringing in my crystals and like all the stuff. I had it around my desk and she'd be like, <sighs> you're such a rock toucher. Like, you know, just she, she meant, I've literally never even heard that one before. <laughs> no, she's like one of my really good friends. So it wasn't yeah, she's just uh, messing with you. 
yeah she was like okay you rock touch her like you're such a weirdo and she would just always joke like I, I don't know but you know it's like I've embraced that but there was a point where I and I just did a post on this recently too like I was embarrassed of my spiritual journey like I was embarrassed to say like I have a connection to source mm. I have a connection to divine you know because it can be so controversial and people just really <laughs> I mean I don't know I feel like people maybe have always kind of been rude and hurtful but it just feels like it's not a new it's, phenomenon <laughs> it's not it just feels like it's so there's so much more yeah happening i feel like it's um like it's both right like the, it's it's both end like because i think of everything that's just going on in the world and plus the pandemic and everything like i think a lot of people got really real, real with themselves and so me and you are on a journey such as that whether that is over the past couple of years or it started long before that, right? Like I would say, you know, this journey for me started the minute I got laid off at eight months pregnant with my first kid and started and, you know, very abruptly was removed from my career and the corporate world at the same time as becoming a mom. And it was like, you know, obviously this really super transitional moment, but like dark and kind of, bitter and angry and sad time frame. So obviously certain things like in that, in that shit, you know, things come up. So my point is that I feel like people are either on that route where they have either experienced something and now are being awakened to many concepts and becoming really a lot more aware of their truths or what they need and what they want and prioritizing that and, and this and that, but it is, so that's like, say for argument's sake, right? That's 50%, right? And the other 50% are so triggered, mm -hmm. so triggered by us over here trying to heal ourselves because it says something about what they're doing or it just triggers a past trauma, whatever it is, right? That that's why you get why it seems like, in my opinion, that like there's more judgment than there even was before because you got half the people are either on the journey or fucking triggered as shit by all of you that are, you know, bettering your, your, you know, trying to evolve. Yeah. Trying to evolve. Like, you know, and I don't care. I don't want to say what I want. Like, this shit ain't working. You know what I mean? Like, the shit, there's so much shit going on. Like, this yeah. ain't working do something different. Yeah. <laughs> if I got to if I'm going to stay in the same, if I'm just going to live in the same mentality and the same struggle bus and the same hustle bullshit and all that, that old mentality, you know, um, there's so many beliefs that like you respect your elders, like that authoritative parenting, even the intensive parenting, like it's all crazy. And then, you know, when it comes to that struggle, like I said, that mentality, that's a very old way of just like, the more I struggle, the more successful I somehow am. Like I'm a better person than you because I've struggled more. Like it's, there's, you know, I could tick down a list endlessly of just the old paradigm, the old way people are waking up left and right. And unfortunately the people who's who have trauma or a highly dysregulated nervous system and they are very therefore just triggered by someone else doing something so different. And then the reaction that you get from that is, is palpable, you know, it, to say the least, but also yeah, hurtful. Yeah, it really is. It can be. Um, which is again, why as not only people like me and you, like on a, like you said, we need community. So like kudos and cheers to you, mama, because it's like, you know, I'm here with you. Like, this is not easy work to stay dedicated, to stay the path and be, you know, in despite all the naysayers, despite all the feathers were ruffling, you know, left and right. And it could be, you know, external, like outside circles or it's, more than likely you are ruffling the feathers for people who are right in front of you, who are right in your inner circle. And it is, 
uh, it is tough to not turn around yet and abandon your truth and just say, fuck it. Um, especially, and this is the last thing I wanted to bring up with you. Um, cause I feel like we could talk all day, but, um, especially as a mom, especially when you're trying to co-regulate with two little humans and establish like this, you know, sense of safety and support and, 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 uh, and have a happy home and happy kids when the journey, that healing journey is such a roller coaster. So it is going to be complicated and dark at times. And then, you know, and then light and freeing at other times. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just, you know, I'm there with you on that. And even more than that, like I, you know, we were talking about like different hats that we're wearing before, like, you know, you're doing the Reiki, you're doing the art, you're a working nurse, like that's a lot, your mom, your wife, like that's a lot. And I'm there with, like, again, I've said it a million times, like I'm there with you wearing all of these hats and it does get really complicated. But like, if for the mamas listening, if you had to throw one thing out there as far as something that helps you balance, you know, quote unquote, or helps you manage and stay regulated through wearing all of those different hats, like what would you say that is? Uh, gosh, I feel like I really could, could say a lot, but honestly, I mean, as hard as it is sometimes, even for me, just, you have to at least do one thing a day to take care of yourself. Like, I don't, I don't care what it is, something that brings you joy, something that lights you up, whether that be like five minutes outside, mm -hmm. like fresh air, like enjoying your favorite cup of coffee. For me, like I have this whole I have a morning routine, so to speak. It's not the same every day, but mm -hmm. like I know if I don't wake up and do whatever it is that morning that I want to do, I'm going to have a shit day because first thing in the morning, I, one thing that I'm doing now, I recently discovered Kundalini yoga and I'm totally obsessed um, that has been my every morning practice like this week and literally shifts like immediately. And I mean, yes, that's on top of my Reiki, but you know, it's just, even if I didn't have Reiki, even if I didn't find Kundalini yoga, you know, anything like that, I would say you have to take time for yourself, you know, if that means you have to set your alarm to wake up five minutes earlier than you normally do, or you need to go to bed five minutes later, like you have to do something for yourself. You have to fill your own cup. And I know people say that all the time, but like, it's so important to, to take care of you and just, you have to, I don't want to say have to like, but just, you have to put yourself first. And again, I know people say that all the time and it's like, yeah, yeah, put yourself first. But I mean, you have to, because otherwise you're just going to like, and this is where I was burnt out, bitter, just hated where I was like, you know, snapping at my kids, irritated, just all of that because I wasn't taking care of myself. And once I started doing that, you know, of course, like I still have bad days. Like I yell, I get snippy, but it's, it's better now because I, I take care of myself first thing in the morning. I set myself up to have a better day so that if I do have bumps in the road, as my day goes on, like I can deal with it better. I can step away and, you know, take a break and step back from what I'm doing and just kind of, you know, realign and, just ask myself like, okay, well, how do I really want to feel in this moment? Like, do I want to continue to be bitter and angry and resentful or would I rather take a deep breath and choose to just feel anything different, calm, peace? Like, do I want a little bit of joy? Do I want some fun? And just switching up that energy to just kind of go in the opposite direction. Yeah. So that was a long-winded answer, but. <laughs> no, it's perfect. I mean, we need to say that I'm the same exact way. Like I 
have a morning quote routine, right? But it might look different day to day because I might not get a full hour to yeah. dedicate in the morning. If I'm if I'm lucky, you know, I can get up. I, I it my kids get up early, so for me and just the type of person I am, like I cannot get up um, much earlier than them. I'm not a five a.m. person. It's just not not in not in this phase of life, yeah. at least. But um, but often people get into that perfectionist type of approach, even with their self care. Mm. So I try to talk about that and kind of like you know release that as much as I can, even for myself. Because the point is that even if it is just having your cup of coffee and doing some stretches, which is basically for me like that is the minimum, right? Um, if I'm not getting to any journaling. And if I'm not getting to a yoga practice or a breath work, breath work practice in the morning, um, then it's literally 10 minutes of stretching and a little yoga on my, on my kitchen floor while my coffee's brewing. Like that's a non-negotiable and 10 to 20 minutes of movement and breathing together for me in the morning will actually make a massive difference. So I, I always talk about that, people getting lost in not prioritizing themselves because they don't have the time. And that's because you're looking for that perfect hour-long window minimum, yeah. right? And it's like, especially as moms, like that might that's definitely not coming every day. And when it does come and it should come, you are actually going to need to cultivate that and, and schedule that and even ask for help and support to make that even possible, which you could absolutely do. But as far as what's going to be available to you every day, realistically, let's be real. Like 20 minutes is going to do a little goes a long way. Yeah. And um, so I love that. So thank you for sharing that. This is perfect. This has been a wonderful conversation at, that I knew, like I just knew we needed to connect. I knew <laughs> inside of me with a capital K. Um and so just tell us where to find you online for anyone who's listening and wants to catch up with you. Sure. So um, I'm on Facebook, uh, Sarah Berlin Game. I do have a free group. Um, <laughs> been battling with changing the name just because most people don't know how to say it. Uh, my group is Key Rising. So K-I and then the word rising, um, as in Reiki, like Key Rising. Um mm -hmm haven't been as active in there as I have intended. So I'm getting back to that place. But in there, I do share, there's a lot in there. Like there's some past artwork, there's some jewelry, like there's just little snippets. I'll do like, I used to do a witchy Wednesday and that was kind of just like a channeled message that came through in the morning. So there's kind of a lot of random things in there. Um, I'm also on Instagram, uh, Sarah shell underscore mystic. And yeah, that's basically it for now. <laughs> cool. Yeah, no, that's those are perfect places to find you in chat. So reach out to Sarah if you want to learn more about her and her offerings. I highly recommend connecting because I've loved watching your journey and um, and all of your offerings. So yeah, for anybody who's listening, if you loved this episode and you want to stay connected with us, you could follow the show Self Care is My Job, either on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, on YouTube, even. You could be watching instead of listening or vice versa. Um, and if you loved it, would you please either share it with somebody or rate or review on Apple Podcasts? That would be really helpful because we're trying to get all of this goodness out to as many people as possible. Um, and that is all. So I'm just going to end our broadcast. I loved talking to you. Thank you so much. Yes, I was so excited to be here. So thank you.